So how about it? Do you mind sampling it? No, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll get this together and we'll collect this. Blood. The Moche had an obsession with blood. Blood was their life, and they didn't spare it. In goblets, they offered it up to the gods. They poured it on the ground to ensure that the land would be fertile. And in battle, they spilt it. You might think the battles have ended, but they go on today. High in the Andes, in the time of planting and rains, from across the mountains, battles are waged. Their fights are called tinkus, the violent meeting of pairs. From different valleys, they line up, ready to battle. <laughs> They're like our battles, but ours were for keeps. While we fought for our lives, they fight for bloodshed. As blood flows into the ground, they believe fertility is promised. And once blood has been spilled, the mountain spirits have been nourished. <laughs> wants to know is what kind of tool were they using to deflesh and dismember the people based on quite a few criteria uh, for example the very the straightness of the walls of the cuts how fine and delicate they are lead me to believe that the moche were using metal tools now whether or not they were using tumis the crescent bladed knives that you see on the pots. That, I can't tell you for sure. I can tell you. The Moche had a practice of art mimicking life. On the pots, you see the warrior priest, the bird priest, the priestess. You found these tombs, and the people buried there have identical headdress, the identical goblet, and so forth, that you see on the pots. So when you see people um, having their hair pulled back and having the Tumi knife at their throat, I think that it's probably um, not too big of a step to assume that, yeah, they were probably using those Tumis to cut up the people in real life. <laughs> 